so-called rapture doctrine did not come into being, was not taught by Paul, but it came into being in the year 1830 by a very disturbed, um, mentally disturbed person who suffered depression and many other things. And naturally, there were two preachers standing by, and boy, they grabbed onto it. And the next thing you know, you got the any moment now doctrine. But very specifically, I'm going to show you why the rapture doctrine is extremely dangerous. Paul knew it was dangerous, and that's why he wrote the second letter to the Thessalonians, because they misunderstood the first letter, as most do today, when they follow commentaries, are the teachings of other men, the traditions of men. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now, I'm going to go a little more into depth than we've ever gone before in this. It is your way of teaching this also. So just relax with me and let it flow. Why is the rapture doctrine dangerous? Let's find out. Chapter 2 of 2 Thessalonians, verse 1. Now we beseech you. Do you know what that states in the Greek? I really want to talk something over very serious with you. Brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, in other words, I want to talk to you about the return, or the coming, the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, as to how we are going to gather back to him, picking up this thought from 1 Thessalonians, the first letter in chapter 4, about where Christ is, when we're getting going to be back with him, when he comes, seventh trump, meeting in this air, spiritual body, in a large cloud of witnesses. All right? So he's, he's picking that thought up again. That's what the subject will be, is when this takes place. What will be happening on this earth at that time? Okay? Verse 2. That you be not soon shaken in mind. In other words, don't let some man or some teacher shake you up. Or be troubled. I don't want you worrying about it. Neither by spirit, don't let some spirit, evil or otherwise, tell you different. Nor by word, that's to say some man's word. Nor by a letter as from us. Not by that first Thessalonians letter. Don't let that trouble you about our getting back together with Yeshua Messiah, Jesus the Christ nor by letter as from us, as that the day of the Christ is at hand. In other words, I, don't, I want to make this clear because it's apparent that it upsets some of you. <laughs> Boy, does it still to this day a very dangerous thing. Boy, does Satan take advantage of it. Why is it dangerous? Listen. In other words, make, now let's, let's get our thoughts back. Paul saying, I want to talk very serious to you about our gathering back together with the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't want you to let that first letter I read to you, some spirit, some person, some word, convince you of any other thing. Verse 3, let no man deceive you. Now the deception of the end times is very critical to those that are still here. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. That's to say, our gathering back in that air body with Christ, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now, that, that really is cut and dried then. The subject then becomes the man of sin, the son of perdition. Who is who? You know, there is only one entity that Almighty God has already sentenced to perish. 
It does not take a Bible scholar to figure that out. You know where it is. 28th chapter of Ezekiel, it's the king of Tyre, which is to say the, co the cherub that cover covereth Satan. Right? The false rock. That's what Tyrus means in the Hebrew tongue. is the false rock. Or at least in that particular case it does. What has he said then? I'm going to tell you something, my friend. This is so contrary to what is commonly taught in the traditions of men that it should make you recognize the danger therein. What Paul has told you is I want to talk to you about our gathering back to Christ. That we're not about to meet him until after the son of perdition sets foot on this earth and there is a great falling away, which the word is apostia in the Greek, meaning the great apostasy, the great deception. Well, I still don't quite understand. Oh, think a moment. Traditions of men have taught you to be ignorant as the heathen whereby you are expecting to fly away to the first Messiah that appears. And what Paul is telling you, that first spurious Messiah is the son of perdition. The same as Christ taught it in Mark 13. Christ said, if they tell you he's in the desert or if they tell you he's here or there, don't go. For the false Messiah will appear first before I return. So you see, it's very simple. Those, Satan will return as the son of perdition and the great falling away comes because he will say, I have come to rapture you away. That's why the first woman taken in the field in Matthew 24 was not taken to heaven, but straight into Satan's bed of hell. Because men, women, listen to teachers who have been taught from commentaries to bring forth the same dribble, rather than listening to the simplicity in which God's word brings forth truth. Paul again saying, don't let my first letter confuse you. We're not, I repeat, we're not flying in some air body, spiritual body, until after the son of perdition. The word perdition, check it out for yourself, my friend. I've told you how. The word perdition means to perish. No one will perish until after Almighty God has judged them. There is only one son. Yes, Satan is God's son. He created him just as he created your body. That is clarified in Ezekiel chapter 28. In the day that I created you, thou wast full of wisdom, so on and so forth. God loved him very much. And then he fell because of pride within himself. He's coming. What's he going to do after he gets here? Verse 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he as God, in other words, he will pretend to be God, the Christ, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. This is why Jesus said, when you see that abomination spoken of by Daniel the prophet, that being this Satan sitting in God's own seat, that's what he wanted in the heavens. He's going to take it here on earth, right on the Mount, of, of, um, uh, Mount Zion, right at the temple, claiming to be God and performing miracles as it is written in Revelation 13. At the snap of the finger, lightning coming from heaven, you think people looking for their so-called flyaway will not jump on board? You bet they will. Do I rejoice in that? No, I weep in that. But the simplicity, the warnings by Paul, I don't want you to be ignorant like the heathen concerning our getting back to Christ. I would... 
people would rather listen to some commentary peddler. Verse 5. Remember ye not that when I was with you I told you these things? They talked about it in detail as they sit around the fires at night. Verse 6. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. My friends, it is very important that you know how to reveal him in his time whereby you don't worship him because he's going to call himself God. Instead of uh, Antichrist means being properly translated instead of Jesus. He's going to be calling himself Jesus. He is a supernatural entity. He is the son of perdition. Now listen carefully. For the mystery of iniquity, that's lawlessness in the Greek, doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. This tells you exactly who we're discussing if you have kept up and outlined the subject and the object. Now, you will have some would-be teachers that would tell you, well, don't you understand what the word let means in English? It's an old Anglo-Saxon word. Hey, it doesn't matter what let means in any language except Greek. Because let is not the word involved. It's catechol, catechol. And catechol is not an old Anglo-Saxon, an old French, an old Latin, or any other word. It's a Greek word. It is a transitive verb, and no one, I mean no one, can deny that if they have any intelligence at all. Now, I'm sure you know what the word transitive means. It means that Within itself, it is a verb, but you must transfer to the subject to understand what is being said. And that's very complete. And it was done. It is known as a transitive verb to a scholar of God's Word. Now, what was the subject? The subject is Satan standing in a holy place, that's to say on Mount Zion, where the temple of God is supposed to be claiming to be God himself, that is to say, Savior. That's the subject. So the verb is that he will stand there. You know the mystery of inequity, of lawlessness, do you? Well, do you know where Satan is? Well, Revelation chapter 12, verse 7, makes it very clear that he's in the heavens until Michael, who is the holding one, casts him out on earth for a little short season to sit on this temple of God claiming to be God. It's going to happen very soon. Therefore, the rapture theory sets you up to worship Satan. It is not true. It is not according to the word of God. I want to say again, it does not matter what language or how you may use the word only he who now let us will let until he be taken out of the way. Only Michael is going to put up with him and hold him until he is cast out on this earth and then de facto it comes to pass. Do you know why? I do not believe that God would allow the transitive verb to be here to be used here in as much as there are some that are not supposed to know the truth because of the simplicity that is taught in God's word everyone should quickly and readily recognize the truth. But there's a reason, verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed. The wicked, the Greek is the lawless one. That is Satan whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. What is, what is it that comes from the Lord's mouth? His tongue, which is to say his word. That is his sword. 
Revelation chapter 1 verse 16 documentation and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. In other words, the Lord will not come until after the appearance of the son of perdition, standing in the holy place, claiming to be God, claiming he's ready to rapture everybody away. And with his miracles, he's going to deceive a lot. Where will you be? Verse 9. Even him who's coming is after the working of Satan, meaning the false prophet also, that particular office, with all power and signs and lying wonders. Ooh, this world is not mentally prepared for that. They've been taught in their little houses on the corner and Bethel's, Beth of Ben's, or houses of repute. You're going to fly away just don't worry about anything. You don't have to understand the Word of God like the book of Revelation because you're going to be gone. You're going to be gone in the sack with Satan, friend, and you will be with child when the true Christ comes. No more a virgin, but spiritually seduced by Satan himself because you have listened to men rather than to dig for yourself the simplicity that is taught in the Word of God by God himself. It is a dangerous thing to listen to man, this man or any other man, without checking it out for yourself. I'm, I'm going to go just another verse or two. Verse 10. And with all deceivableness, all the trickery, everything he can sum of unrighteousness in them that perish. Again, do you know what that word perish means? Zippo. Fini. Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Do you know what the love of the truth is? The truth is God's word. People won't study it. They want to listen to a bunch of commentary peddlers that do not study into the languages or the word of God. It is real sad. But I would dare say that there's probably not two Christians not over five at the most in the world today that can handle the Masara itself. That's sad. But they would rather do something else, take the easy way, rather than studying the truth. And God said the punishment for it is they're going to believe that lie. Verse 11, And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Who? The one sitting in Jerusalem to be worshipped. Twelve. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth. The truth again is the word of God. But had pleasure in unrighteousness. A wedding out of season. To listen to the commentary peddlers rather than students of the word of God which bring forth the this, this splendid simplicity of truth in the word of God whereby you could not be deceived that you would receive that truth whereby you receive his love understanding, clarity so you see the end time events such as rapture see the word of rapture is not in the word of God that's a, a coined phrase by man. Well, you read caught up, huh? Yeah, but you surely you were wise enough. You're not as ignorant as the heathen are, are you, that you understand what caught up means? Hmm. I hope so. But they'll tell you it's there. I've got news for you. Find it for me. It isn't. It, in fact, is the fertile seedbed for 666 because those that believe upon the so-called rapture doctrine are prime candidates to be deceived with their quick trip escape because they have been taught don't study the truth you don't need it you're going to be gone one of the favorite things Satan loves from pulpits, no less, in so-called houses, 
Bethel, Bethavins, or of ill repute, I know not. God knows. To teach people to go flying off after the fake husband instead of remaining virgins for the true Christ. Woe to those that are with child when I return and that give suck, Christ says in Matthew 24 and in Mark 13. He was not talking about a physical mother carrying a child in her womb, but about those that would spiritually be impregnated in their forehead, their mind, by the false teachings that Satan impregnates the ignorance to believe his wonderful lie and God allows it because man will not love his word and truth. Well, that's the way it is. That's the end times. Something to worry about? No, it's something to rejoice about. For as sure as the three, the Hebrew children, refuse to bow a knee to the image made by the beast, that's to say the king of Babylon, who was a type of this one that's coming, the son of perdition. Sixty by six it was. Doesn't that warn you of something in the book of Daniel? And every time the six instruments played, again the number of Satan, they refused to bow and cast into the fiery furnace. Heated seven times hotter than necessary. Those that cast them into the furnace were dead. But Nebuchadnezzar looked. He loved Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he looked and he said, Did we not cast but three? There are four walking in the furnace. Jesus Christ himself walked the furnace, the Son of God, with them and brought them forth out of that furnace to say to you, It does not matter about Satan's tribulation. I will see you through if you have on the gospel armor to stand against the fiery darts of Satan. It didn't say to put the gospel armor on to, to sleep with Satan. But to stand against the fiery darts of Satan. Ephesians chapter 6. What has Christianity turned into? Good or what? That people would rather listen to commentary peddlers degrees in commentaries all they can do is spew out what other men have said and they cannot take the time to look into the simplicity of the language in which God spoke that gave us that truth and whether it be in ignorance or what I know not I don't judge and they are my brothers. But I think it's very sad that Christendom has come to this point. But then, not to worry, God himself said it would in the prophecies. It has happened. What an interesting year we have before us. Get ready, my friends. Mark the time. Nothing will ever be the same as we move into that era of the new world order and the new covenant made by our dear governor of Arkansas. I love Arkansas. I hope you all <laughs> learn to be careful of the new covenant. You are warned. What an interesting year. Time to rejoice. Be happy. For when you accept his truth, you will not be deceived. All right. Bless your hearts. We're going to stop there a moment. Listen a moment. Won't you please? Introductory.